This video is brought to you by Brilliant. What do you do if a satellite runs out of batteries? It's prohibitively expensive to send a team into orbit and pop in some new double A's. As a result, many satellites use very efficient, reliable, and long-lived nickel hydrogen batteries. We're talking about batteries that may last decades. That sounds like the sort of battery that could revolutionize grid-scale energy storage and really help out renewables back here on Earth, which is why Entervenue is backing nickel hydrogen batteries as the next step forward. But if batteries rugged and powerful enough for spacecraft already exist, then why haven't we used them back here on Earth until now? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This scuba tank-esque device is a nickel hydrogen battery, a member of the metal hydrogen battery family, and it could revolutionize renewable energy and grid-scale energy storage. The unique chemistry and engineering of these batteries can allow them to retain 86% of their capacity after 30,000 cycles, or roughly 30 years, with zero maintenance to boot. Better yet, these batteries are extremely temperature tolerant, able to work just fine in the temperature extremes of space. Modern designs boast 560 watts, so it's no slouch on power either, and like other battery-based grid storage solutions we've examined, they scale quite easily. All you have to do is just daisy-chain some more batteries together to suit your needs. But why are we only dusting off this practically ancient NASA design now? And if this battery is so great, why has it been relegated to probes and satellites so far? And where the heck did it even come from? Well, founded as a result of space race tensions on President Kennedy's orders, ComSat Laboratories was tasked with exploring satellite communications for the US government. In 1970, they began experimenting with nickel hydrogen batteries by combining the best parts of metal hydrogen batteries and fuel cells. Precursors like nickel cadmium power cells and hydrogen oxygen fuel cells were already proven pieces of aerospace tech. So pushing the envelope by combining these other pieces of tech wasn't mad science as much as it was logical leap forward. Now the result was an incredibly long-lived, energy-dense, and low-maintenance battery prototype, ideal for satellite-type applications. A few more successful tests and some optimizations later, and the battery was passed along to ComSat's sister organization, Intelsat. By 1975, the organization successfully launched the Naval Research Laboratory's navigational satellite, the NTS-2, equipped with a nickel-hydrogen battery. And the batteries have been popular ever since, powering everything from the International Space Station, to the Hubble Telescope, to the Mars rover. And the rest is history. Or at least it was, until Entervenue saw it as a potential solution for grid-scale storage issues. But if these batteries are perfect for grid-scale storage, then why hasn't anyone used nickel hydrogen batteries in this kind of application until now? Well, to explain that, let's talk about how nickel hydrogen batteries work and why they might be able to do more good here on Earth. Well, the nickel hydrogen battery combines the positive nickel electrode of a nickel cadmium battery and the negative electrode, including the platinum catalyst and gas diffusion elements of a hydrogen fuel cell. The secret sauce is highly pressurized hydrogen gas, like very highly pressurized, usually around 500 to 1500 PSI. Now, for comparison, your car's tires should be clocking in around 33-ish PSI. So is such an insanely high PSI necessary? Well, yes, chemically and mechanically. The high PSI can significantly increase the energy density of the battery, which indirectly improves the energy efficiency by allowing the batteries to store more energy for a given volume. Without going too deep into the chemistry, higher pressure means more hydrogen gas, and more hydrogen gas means a higher propensity for the reaction to occur. The pressure also makes the hydrogen more mobile and available, which results in better stats for the battery. The electrode is also a porous structure, so a higher pressure of the battery means the electrolyte can better squeeze into the pores of the electrode to react. This is desirable because when it comes to new battery tech, density is often the name of the game. We want to be able to store the most amount of energy in the least space possible. So by highly pressurizing the hydrogen, we can make the battery denser both physically and energetically. Still, I don't know if I'd want something so highly pressurized in my car or phone, not that a battery the size of a shape of a scuba tank could fit my phone, but you get the idea. For all this talk of density, nickel hydrogen batteries are still only about 140 watt hours per kilogram. So they aren't as energy dense as lithium ion batteries at around 260 watt hours per kilogram. Now that's precisely why lithium ion is starting to edge nickel hydrogen batteries out of aerospace. And that's okay though, because stationary storage applications have space to spare and don't care a whole lot about energy density. There's a lot of other benefits to these batteries too. Lithium ion is temperature sensitive and ideally likes room temperature ranges. Nickel hydrogen, on the other hand, can handle the temperature extremes of Mars and space, so we'll have no problem with the hottest and coldest temperatures on our planet. Like some of the other grid scale tech that we've seen, this doesn't require a heating or cooling system like lithium ion does, which in turn could offer additional savings. You can build out a system in the middle of the desert and not have to worry about any maintenance or heating issues. 
You also don't have to worry about thermal runaway like with lithium ion batteries. However, hydrogen is flammable and very reactive. This stuff has to be handled responsibly. However, it's lighter than air and dissipates quickly into non-flammable concentrations when it escapes confinement. And hydrogen fires produce a lot less ambient heat than comparable hydrocarbon fires. Industrial designs can help direct hydrogen up and away in the case of an unexpected release. And that's not to diminish the fire concern, but safely managing hydrogen is absolutely possible. The other big safety concern is the high pressurization of the hydrogen gas. And though it sounds like these batteries could explode like the scuba tank at the climax of Jaws, that's just not the case. In testing, Intervenue deliberately perforated their batteries with nails and even a variety of firearms. They observed no explosion, no fire, and no materials were ejected from the battery, not even the bullets. Also, during the tests, the surface temperature of the cell topped out at a reasonable 44 degrees Celsius or 112 degrees Fahrenheit, and both the pressure and voltage dissipated as soon as the batteries perforated. So no explosion, the hydrogen dipped out safely, and neither heat nor the electricity could start a fire. That's a solid safety card. And this is backed up by a 2017 test from NASA, showing that even in the event of a hypervelocity impact, NASA's nickel hydrogen batteries didn't catastrophically rupture or experience an unusual thermal event. While we're on the subject of how rugged and forgiving the nickel hydrogen chemistry is, I should also mention that there's no dendrite formation with this chemical formula. Dendrites are tiny, spiky metal structures that accumulate on the battery's anode during charging. Repeated charging cycles can cause the dendrites to grow, eventually causing short circuits that can lead to fires or other battery failures. As a result, these are a major limiting factor when it comes to the lifespan of batteries, especially the ever-popular lithium-ion batteries, but they don't form in nickel-hydrogen batteries. That's a big part of the reason why NASA and Intervenue called these batteries low-maintenance or virtually maintenance-free. Low-maintenance is a big deal, because the pressurization I mentioned earlier requires a hermetic seal. In other words, cracking one open for some quick repairs just isn't an option. And because most of the chemicals in there are hydrogen and water, they're relatively non-toxic too. Always nice when we're trying to be more environmentally friendly. The simplicity of the chemical reaction and lack of moving parts also means that this battery is pretty easy to manufacture. Intervenue claims that their version only requires about 20 unique components. Hydrogen is famously the most abundant element in the whole universe, and nickel is fairly abundant on all major continents. This eases the supply chain and cost issues of nickel hydrogen batteries compared to other new battery technologies. That said, the price of nickel surged 250% in 2022. It was only for a couple days, but it still forced an unexpected halt to trading, and it could happen again despite nickel's abundance. However, Intervenue's batteries can last 30,000 cycles or about 30 years of daily use. And a long-lived battery means less batteries that get thrown away or need to be recycled. Plus, when the time comes, Intervenue claims their battery is almost 100% recyclable. A lot of the cost of solar plants come from maintenance, up to a third. So the set it and forget it nature of nickel hydrogen batteries are expected to be a huge operational cost saver for renewable energy storage facilities. Which is good because as you might have guessed by now, all these great features come at a price, a very high price. Perhaps unsurprisingly for technology designed for spy satellites and deep space probes, nickel hydrogen batteries are very expensive devices. The cost is so intense, it's the main reason we haven't seen this tech on Earth very much. It's been a financial limiting factor, not a technological one. And despite possible cost savings from the lack of maintenance, the commonality of nickel and other features, these batteries prominently feature pricey platinum or palladium. If you've ever been unfortunate enough to have your catalytic converter stolen, you're probably all too familiar with how expensive these metals are. We don't have to give up on these incredible batteries yet though, because Intervenue believes it's found a way to make nickel hydrogen not just cheaper, but even cost competitive with the market dominating lithium ion battery. The company's attacking the cost issue on two fronts. First, it's using economies of scale and mass production to bring down the price. Now, don't get me wrong, these are still expensive batteries, but with a 1 million square foot gigafactory putting together tons of them, they'll no longer be the bespoke custom design kind of expensive. And that factory is almost ready, by the way. It'll be complete and enter phase one of production in the first quarter of 2024. On top of this, Intervenue has already signed 805 megawatt hours worth of firm orders. Not many in the battery space can boast similar success stories before they've even opened production. But then again, nickel hydrogen batteries are a proven piece of tech that's been around for years. So it's not a risky bet if the price is right. And as we so often find on this channel, mass production and standardization really tempers some of the most expensive parts of the design and the machining process. Will mass production alone make nickel hydrogen batteries cost competitive with lithium ion batteries? No, but lithium doesn't scale up very well, and these guys do. 
In theory, this will make nickel hydrogen batteries cost competitive in large grid scale circumstances, which is exactly where we need them most. But assembly lines and standardization can only get you so far when the components themselves are expensive. Hydrogen, though it's abundant, has to be separated from other components before it can be used. There's a variety of ways to do this, but the least expensive methods are also the least environmentally friendly. And then there's still the problem of very pricey platinum or palladium being a key component in these batteries. At the time of this writing, platinum clocks in at around $1,000 per ounce, and palladium at $1,300 per ounce. For large-scale projects like, oh, maybe a grid-scale storage plant, we're going to need a lot of these precious metals. Intervenue has been working on this pain point as well, and has replaced the platinum anode inside their battery with something else. What? <laughs> we don't know for sure, but there are some really good clues. That information is proprietary, but it was developed by Stanford materials scientist Professor Yi Shui, a prolific researcher in the sustainability space. Intervenue claims that Shui's design is compatible with mass production, is cheaper than platinum, works better, and makes the battery generally easier to produce. An interview's tech was successfully commercially deployed in 2022. Research from Stanford, some of which Professor Shui was involved in, has demonstrated that replacing a nickel hydrogen battery's platinum catalyst with a bifunctional nickel molybdenum cobalt alloy catalyst could reduce the cost to just $83 per kilowatt hour. The US Department of Energy has a target of $100 per kilowatt hour for grid storage. So this achieves that milestone. Is this the new catalyst that Intervenue is using? Again, we don't know for sure, but it at least proves that cheaper alternative catalysts, like the kind that Intervenue claims to be using, are not theoretical or just hype. That said, I can't help but remain a little skeptical about the development until we know exactly what Professor Shui's mystery material is, and its effectiveness and cost has been verified. So are our energy stores problems solved? Maybe. There's still plenty of known unknowns, like whether developers can successfully hook up these funky batteries to form large-scale storage plants as Intervenue claims. Similarly, utility companies are often change-averse, and for good reason. As long as the power is flowing, their customers are happy. But anything that threatens that state of order could lead to big trouble. Are these companies ready to adopt something so out of the ordinary, even a long-proven piece of space technology? Means to be seen. But if these batteries work as advertised and the utilities do adopt them, then the biggest albatross around the neck of renewables could disappear. A cheap, durable, long-lasting, cost-competitive way to store and easily unstore mass amounts of renewable energy. That's the dream, and thanks to Intervenue, it might be closer than we think. If you'd like to learn more about the science behind energy storage systems like this, I'd strongly recommend checking out Brilliant.org. They have fantastic interactive courses like the Chemical Reaction course, which goes into detail on atoms and charges. I went through that one and really enjoyed learning at my own pace. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from AI to electricity and magnetism. They've got something for everyone, and they're adding new lessons every single month. If you're like me, you're probably busy and may not think that you have the time to take a course, but Brilliant is built around bite-sized lessons to break down concepts into very understandable parts. My favorite part, though, is the very visual, hands-on approach that makes learning easier, but also more fun. You're learning the concepts by applying them through fun and interactive problems yourself. I found this active learning is how I learn best. Try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days and visit brilliant.org undecided, or click the link in the description. The first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant and to all of you for supporting the channel. So what do you think? Jump into the comments and let me know. And I have a big announcement. I'll be attending the fully charged live event in Vancouver, which runs from September 8th to the 10th. It's a phenomenal fan event about home energy and EVs, with lots of companies showing off their latest tech and fun sessions on a wide range of topics. I'll be on a few panels myself. Now, if you want to attend, use my discount code UNDECIDED to get 25% off the ticket price. I'll put a link in the description, and if you do go, be sure to say hi. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. And thanks to all my patrons who get ad-free versions of every video. And welcome to new Supporter Plus member, William Jasuris. Hope I didn't butcher your name. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.